So we're here in Kazan, Russia, specifically this area called the Kremlin, where it celebrates, I guess, Tartan culture, history. Right here you have the cathedral, the church, and then you also have the mosque, which is called the Kul Sharif Mosque. <laughs> but I was gonna get started with you, what okay. we talked about on the art of war, but I think I actually want to ask you something that we were talking about a couple of weeks ago. Um, try to like throw you off and see if you can adapt, as Musashi would say, uh, to the situation. But it's the the question that's coming to my mind. It, it, you'll you'll know what I'm talking about. Is Mr. Jonathan Wilson? <laughs> How do I, you? You know, I paid <laughs> a lot of money in my education, Mister. <laughs> Is it doctor or professor okay. you, were, you were thinking about? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Dr. Jonathan Wilson. Yeah. How do you get paid invitations, gigs, travel all over the world to talk? How do you do all that? How do you get that? How do I get that? How do I become like you? Yeah, I don't ask you. How do you get that? No, no. Okay, wait, wait. wait. No, 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 no. I, 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 okay. Hold on, hold on. Okay. Let me ask you first. And then we can, you know, go. Okay. With, and my mouth is like freezing because it's like all of a sudden it got cold, cold here. It's cold. Like we were here earlier, and then which. But anyway, how can I be like you? Okay, so the, I, mean, and I don't even know what that means. How can I be like you? But it's, yeah. How do I get to try? Oh, do. <laughs> I wanna be like you. <laughs> um, so he, the first thing I think you, I think you might want to take note of is that you're an entertainer. Yeah. So that helps, right, with yeah. the whole. Being a presenter, being someone who talks, who does public speaking, your entertainment. So I guess to a degree, right? Your entertainment to a degree. Edutainment, yeah. Okay. I think if you're an academic, it's a lot easier than if you're an industry professional, right? Really? I'll, I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll go back to some of the things I was really? going to say. I, I, yeah. I, I, I mean, it's going to be boring, dude. No, I mean easier to get onto the circuit. Okay. When you okay, look, you got to define certain okay. things by get on the circuit easier, right. like people are trying to understand because look there's a lot of people who are in cubicles cubicle stuck called i'm sorry my mouth is literally freezing so i'm like stumbling on my words there are people who are in their cubicles okay nine to five yeah. academics stuck in their desk yeah at their desk stuck right. in their rooms and they look at what you're doing right and they want to do it so and you just fight you find a lot of questions at me so I'm sorry, let, I'm sorry. Let me try and hold on. <laughs> he can't even answer it. I'm like, let me rephrase that for the seventh <laughs> time because I don't think you understand because I'm an idiot. Okay, go ahead. So I'm gonna I'm actually right. gonna step out of frame so he can answer. No, so I mean the first thing is, right, um as a former musician, you form a band and you do what you know we've we've talked about as being the dive bars, right? You know, you you practice and you rehearse. Okay, look, look, you're using these phrases okay. that be dive bars, like circuit, okay. you gotta like... <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Sorry, Muslim world. <laughs> right, so basically, um, you're doing gigs. You're just happy for someone to listen to your music, right? You've practiced in a garage, garage, if you're American or whatever, and then, and then you perform somewhere. And you know it's not going to be to a lot of people, and it's not going to get paid, but you yeah. need to get good. And even when you're looking for that record deal, yeah. so if we think of a record deal as being something similar to the agent or the conference organizer that's willing to pay you money for that thing, right? Before you get to that stage, you have to have done a certain number of shows and done the right shows in order that you can then be spotted and picked up, right? Now, that's become easier thanks to social media, thanks mm. to YouTube or whatever. So if you can get show reel, if you can get evidence of you speaking in front of a crowd, got it, in front of an audience, good point, good point. and you're rocking the crowd, then you're, you're gonna speed up the likelihood of you being able to get those paid for bookings. Okay, right? so let, hold on, just to yeah. stop you there. So people take note of this. Number one, he was an entertainer in a past life. Yeah. So playing a guitar, being able to engage the crowd, having the crowd have their eyes focused on him, being able to entertain is one thing that you had working for you. <laughs> Number two is that doing dive bars, right? Doing yeah. these events that you're not going to get paid. Uh, There's three people yeah. and they're like... <laughs> a, load, a load of gigs, a load of gigs. Doing right. gigs. Yeah. So practice as practice. musashi would say practice which practice. actually before i go on to the other bits i think you raised i mean you raised a good point because i've seen people debate about how much you should practice and some people say you could over practice 
mm. um, when it comes to presenting. So, so it becomes wooden, right? Either you're the person that reads off the notes or reads off the PowerPoint, yeah. or you just riff it. And and I've seen. Well, well you say riff it. What does that mean, riff? Okay, so some people have a more laid back style. So basically, it's like they're not reading off notes and they're not reading off the PowerPoints. They're just speaking in a very fluid and natural way. Now, there are good and bad things in both techniques, right? What I learned about live performing is that when you're in the moment and it's about entertaining and rocking the crowd, stage diving, like, <laughs> like all that kind of stuff, head banging. Like, <laughs> hold on, hold on. No, no, let me okay, explain. Go, go, go. You do those things because you want to entertain the crowd. But unless you're really, really good, that's at the expense mm. of the quality of the of the musical performance of the sound True. so i remember there was like good you know point. if you remember like point. you're in a, you're in a band and we're like playing and then your singer goes and stage dives <laughs> and then <laughs> by the time he gets back on stage he's missed a verse yeah 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 now that's great for a live show because people go like wow he stage dived and it yeah. was like it went all crazy it doesn't work if that show is being recorded mm. like so for example i remember we did one show and it was um it was being recorded for radio one right and actually, if I was to be honest, like the the sound when when we heard it back, and when the when Radio One heard it back, it was not as good as it should have been. Uh, so okay. they ended up they ended up playing like a, a track from our album, right? Um, so the thing was that you have to know what the purpose of your performance is. If it's unrecorded and it's about <laughs> the, <laughs> the wind, everything okay. going. We yeah. go, so keep yeah. going, keep going. That's my uh, martial arts reaction. <laughs> so the thing is that um, if you're going to record it and it's going to go online, yeah. right, and it's that kind of showreel, you can't be erming and suffering trying to entertain people so much, and you can't be moving around in and out of shot and in the camera and everything. <laughs> 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 I, I speak English. <laughs> Russian, yeah, Malinkin, yeah. Good evening. Abdullah. Что вы снимаете? I'm sorry. What's going on here? <laughs> what you I need, want to get some tartar sauce. How do I get some tartar sauce? Uh huh. Uh. Uh. Scott, let's see. You're here. Say something. Say hi. Hi, hi, America. Say hi, America. Hi, America. <laughs> Say hi, London. I love America. No, no, you're not bound from London. You say America. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so look, look, look. Let's get into this. Okay. So, okay, let, if you. Uh, so, if we, we go back to. If we go Radio back to, 1. Yeah. <laughs> Here you go. In so, the recording studio, when you make an album, you have to be <laughs> note perfect, right? Okay, yeah. So, that's when, for example, the person that, that reads off a script effectively is not perfect but it's very dry yeah right so there are strengths on both sides yeah so if you want to demonstrate More selfie. <laughs> this is video it's not selfie <laughs> oh, it's oh. okay let us finish and then let us finish okay. and then we'll okay. let me just, okay. let's just deal with these people pause it pause it no 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 no, no. okay oh, okay hold on yeah selfie yeah go on. take a selfie okay. see so oh, entertainment no 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 so oh, selfie with selfie uh, what are we doing Oh, okay, okay. Okay, so, um, okay, okay, so, okay, selfie time. If you if you're in a situation where you want to demonstrate kind of the technical aspects, then you can't be riffing. It's got to be it's got to be no perfect, right? Now, you've got to therefore get to a stage when actually you're balancing both of them, right? You've you've got the kind of the outline, and that's why I think the business people are in because as a musician, as a musician, that isn't even a discussion because you have to write the song, okay. you have to rehearse it, you have to practice it, and you have to be no perfect. And then once you're no perfect, you can start to entertain. Otherwise, okay. you don't have a song. Whereas business people look at it in a very kind of um, they don't see it as a linear thing they see it as a parallel right so as a musician you're basically saying you write the song you practice it you record it and then when you become familiar with it you, re you rehearse it some more and then you perform mm -hmm. right whereas in the business world it's basically like you write a speech and then people read off the the PowerPoint slides and, and they do bullets or you're the creative maverick type 
that likes to kind of riff yeah. but you can't do a circuit because each talk is different and you lose your train of thought or even worse the thing that i was doing before which is if you're being recorded and some conferences have a podium and they have the camera on the podium so i've seen people think that they're really amazing and it's a good live presentation but they move off the podium and so when they ask for the, the showreel afterwards they have no showreel mm. because they moved away from the mic they're pointing and they're kind of doing all yeah, of these I've, things i've made those mistakes right so and i've made those mistakes too right so the thing is that you have to get to a stage where you practice and the reason that i say that academics are in a strong position is because that's a core part of our job not necessarily performance but dissemination of information and communication and doing lectures right Got so it. okay okay so lectures are where i can practice day in day out if you're doing like 20 hours a week or something even i think in my early days I remember doing like 35 hours of lectures in a week that's the longest i did hmm. that is a lot of talking right so you get good at being able to talk for long periods of time and as an academic the the, the kind of the, the process is that you're doing lectures you do research and then there are academic conferences which don't pay okay research to a lot of industry people they're quite dry yeah because effectively you're showing your stats and your tables yeah and you're not meant to entertain you're just meant to show yeah the theory and and the method and stuff like that so the, the challenge for an academic wanting to go into the paid circuit is once you've learned all those things putting them to one side and saying okay how do i get bums on seats how do i move the dial in terms of what an industry person would want to see because generally speaking it's industry conferences it's quite tough because you're up against in a branding perspective people go to conferences because of who's going to be speaking and they generally look at uh, which company people go you're to from. concerts yeah so okay. it's like if there's a if there's a if go there's to plays they go to ballets i mean you're going yeah, yeah. because of who is actually going to be presenting so if you if there's a lineup where there's people i've spoken at conferences where it's like oh there's a guy from ibm there's a guy from microsoft or you know even the former private secretary to princess diana or yeah. or person from hsbc or things like that then and there's little johnny right hmm. being frank about it, it's like well why would little johnny get a gig like why would they want to hire me i have to deliver something which is different therefore i've got to go as an academic if i wear the cap of an academic it's got to be, have more insight yeah. I can deliver more insight than they can, but it has to be presented to an industry audience. So I had to develop a reputation for being the academic that industry people would want to hear from because I tell them how it is and I give them something that they don't have the chance to be able to deep dive into. Okay. Now, so okay. let me just... Okay, before you do that, okay. I just wanted to say that... So, so the other path before I forget is that if you work in industry but you want to get on the conference circuit, some people might think, oh, it's too tough because... Now, the when you say work in industry so like and get into the circuit, what do you mean by that? So you work in marketing or like you work in a business function, but you actually want to speak at conferences as well. And it might you might think, oh, it's just the CEO or the head person that speaks. But actually, I know now that there are a lot more people, especially with social media, who could be in middle management, but they just develop the ability to speak and get on the circuit because not all senior management has the time to be able to go on the circuit. So if there is someone that, that mm. basically raises their hand and says, I could be the representative, the face of this company, and I could speak, then you've got to put forward a business case because yeah. essentially it's like, let me out the office to do this public facing yep. industry engagement, right? Yep. In order for you to be able to do that, then you still need a pitch. Yeah. But the challenge becomes for the industry person do you have enough time to practice like the academic? Because yeah. if I'm doing like 20 hours a week consistently and they don't have any time to practice, they're used to just doing like like um, presentations amongst their peers in the boardroom. Yeah. That's when it becomes tough because they don't actually have the time to, to, to look at the market, to look at other talks, to do the marketing, the show reel. It seems like stuff that's not connected to their job. but. Yeah. Ultimately, both paths have to lead to the same place, which is you pretty much like an actor or a musician. You need that showreel, yeah. you need the CV, yeah. you need the profile, you need the photograph. You need basically uh, an identity kit, which is ready to hand over to a conference organizer that says, if you book me, this is what you get. Yeah. Bang, bang, bang. So I'd also want to throw in there some points, right, uh, of just watching your evolution and your uh, growth in this conference. We met what five years ago, man. We were we were in Dubai. Yeah, yeah. Um. I think a lot of it has to do with just natural skill set too, because some people are just you can talk and talk and talk and talk. 
Because I've seen people who talked like 10 years ago and they're still talking. Yeah. Uh, granted, they're talking at events that are not making any money, but they're still doing events. Right. And I'm like, I would never want to watch this guy or this girl talk again. So that's the next thing that I actually like as part of my kind of journey and still my journey. I hunt out good speakers, whether okay. that's on YouTube or TED Talks okay, or so even that's another point. Okay. face to face. I am the guy that will sit in the audience and watch. Okay. And basically see like like what makes you a good speaker. And I'll look at and the reason for going to a live event, like going to a live show as a musician, is well, how did the crowd react? Yeah. Like yeah, yeah. YouTube won't give all of those uh, those those signals out, right? Yeah. But if you're in the audience and it's like, did the did the energy level drop? Did they have insight? How are they next to the other speaker on the roster? Um, I'll look at all of those things because I want to just basically learn myself. And I would extend that to like looking at stand-up comedians yeah because they so all entertainers yeah for different reasons uh, stand-up comedians because humor is a very powerful tool yeah. in, in order to keep energy levels but up humor is like that's a that's something you're just given by god dude i don't you can't i think there was what's his name what's the, i forgot the guy who wore like the real baggy suits the african-american guy big mustache the comedian and he said I, it was with uh, what's his name Jerry Seinfeld comedians in cars okay and he goes like he went to a class where it was a comedy class about how to be funny yeah and he walked in and he's like if I gotta teach you guys to be funny you guys aren't gonna ever make it yeah but so you, but like, you know humor is. is not something you certain tricks but then even like I remember it was a conference well, I saw it was Jeff Cesario and he was talking about about his kind of stand-up comedy and then how he went into doing um, like problems with Korean Latifah and then and I spoke to him afterwards because I was asking him, he was um, I think he did some coaching for Russell Brand before he went on his tour okay. and and I was literally like trying to get a game from him and he was a really cool guy Jeff if you watch this which is unlikely <laughs> what's up right and there was another guy who was there I mean I think it was, it was there Orlando Jones was there as well and yeah. that was really cool but um I guess what I'm trying to say is, you don't have to be a stand-up comedian. You just yeah. have to be a little bit funnier than you already are. Yeah, but that's but hard. You can, no, you okay. can learn enough because... I don't know. How many boring conferences have you been to? If you're just marginally funnier than every other speaker, then you've done enough. Yeah. Like if, you, I, if you're I, a little bit more entertaining than every other lecturer, people go, thank God. Like, like I'd, also, I'd also like to, because you're an academic, and I probably this is much easier for academics. Yeah. For people who are not in the academic space who want to get into the circuit of speaking, yeah, um, I would highly suggest reading. Yeah, reading a lot because you see, especially good speakers who can just go from idea to idea. Have to you ever idea. read speeches? The books on speeches. So, like, you no. know, like some of the great speeches when you think about, oh yeah, yeah, okay, and they go like, oh, this was a classic speech, yeah. and then they talk about those things. But then, even still, the reason I'm going to go back to comedy for a little bit. Okay, I like observational comedy. Because I learn a way of looking at the world. Because the thing is, they find something in, in reality that everyone else just thinks is just a way of living. Yeah. And they, they distort it a little bit or they, they observe something. And that becomes a humorous element. True. And in some ways, like as an academic, I am trying to challenge conventional norms. When I say, did, did you see this? Have you thought of it like that? And I know that, you know, there was that joke when we were in Jakarta. And I, and I said that, um, we're talking about halal, right? Yeah. And I thought... Like everyone is always like, I want you to do the icebreaker because everyone is always talking about um, about the slaughter of animals and whether they have been stunned or unstunned. And that's when it came out. And I was like, all you guys want to talk about is stunning chicks. <laughs> and I actually put it in my in my book yeah. as, as a kind of like as a I joked about that yeah. thing. But it was to break the ice, and, and people kind of saw the funny side, so that we could move on because otherwise conversations would get stuck. So this is why you need a tool that breaks people away from this kind of monotony or, or, or kind of energy low. So whether that's humor, if you can't do humor, tell a story or an anecdote or a proverb or there was a sporting event or there was something like, it's something that takes people away from that kind of, that ba-bum, ba-bum, ba-bum. I mean, another way to look at it is, um, when I'm teaching uh, research or, or kind of logic, logic thinking at university, we often talk about there being three stages of a kind of logical argument. You state a fact, you then come with an explanation, and then you arrive at a conclusion. Now, you've heard of the phrase jumping to conclusions. A lot of people jump to conclusions, right? So, for example, if we're out and about, and I say, that's a really nice cake that you've got, and you could say, do you want some? 
you've jumped to a conclusion. I just made a statement of fact. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying that that's wrong, but that's just kind of the way that humans are, right? But if you want to put forward a good presentation, a logical argument works. Now, the challenge then is that if you're always doing essentially one, two, three, fact, explanation, conclusion, it's very boring. And sometimes I flip it and do conclusion, explanation then fact so for example yeah, well that's after a lot of practice man. no but then you but if you look at things in blocks so like one two three three two one that's the structure i think this is a video for people oh, like okay. this is getting super complex now and i'm freezing <laughs> yeah, so okay. i actually want to so look wrap it up 30 seconds what would you say okay in giving advice to people i want to do what you're doing dr right. jonathan wilson how do I get on the circuit? How do I get paid gigs? How do I get invited to speak all over the world and get paid to do it? Sum it up, 30 seconds. What would be the boom, 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 boom? I'll leave it for you. Go ahead. You seconds. and the camera. Okay, so basically what you've got to do is you have to, you have to put in the time. So like if, for example, you want to speak in Malaysia, I had to have gone to Malaysia before I got invited on a spade on a spade on a paid speaking <laughs> tour right it's getting cold um you have to have been there first so you have to kind of um reduce people's kind of fear right or apprehension about about having you on board right so if you've already spoken to x number of people like if you spoke to two thousand people then you get a two thousand speaking gig how you get that gig in the first place probably you're going to have to do a guest appearance so i remember uh, i was invited on stage at one conference and uh, uh, Philip Kotler was there and there were like a thousand people or something like that wasn't my paid speaking gig but I was able to demonstrate that I could handle the crowd of that size and then if you do a thousand you can do five thousand okay look, look give them five right. give them five no give them five points what you need to do what are the five things that you think someone needs to do just to sum it all up you need to research okay. the market what people are talking about uh, what the conference circuit is interested in what audiences like, right? You need to know the market, basically. Number two, you need to have your show reel, your basic elevator pitch, like why you and not somebody else. So the photo kit, the bio, the show reel, if you've got it, it's on a plate that you can hand over. If someone says yes, then you're good to go. Uh, number three, you need to have like your own kind of, I suppose, one trick. Like you, you have to be at one stage a one trick pony. What do you talk about? Not I talk about marketing, but I talk about halal and branding. Or I talk about uh, Kazan, Tatarstan, and customer relationship marketing. But I can show how it relates to like kind of your Those three things. What does it have three? Right. Anyway, I wanted to ask you that because that was a question you were getting, and people yeah. were asking me for you. Yeah. And, uh, Signing out because it's getting cold from Kazan, Russia, the third capital we'll of... We'll do a part two because I think that you have to probably are for <laughs> A third capital of Russia yeah. after St. Petersburg and Moscow. So we're about uh, half an hour, half an hour... Man, it's cold. <laughs> it's half, really an hour. <laughs> a half an hour flight east of Moscow. But thank you for answering the question and... Have a good time here in Russia because it's cold. <laughs>